Every Hanukkah, Jewish people around the world retell the legendary story of Judah and the Maccabees. But hundreds of years ago, many Jews also celebrated the story of Judith and a severed head. The story begins. It was the 12th year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, who ruled over the Assyrians in the great city of Nineveh. Because Nebuchadnezzar took power in 605 BCE, we know our story starts in 593 BCE. Nebuchadnezzar is at war with Arphaxad, a Median king ruling over an empire in ancient Iran. Nebuchadnezzar asks other nations to join him in his fight against Arphaxad, but nobody bites. But it doesn't matter, because five years later, Nebuchadnezzar defeats Arphaxad on his own and vows to destroy those nations who did not join him. The next year, he sends Holofernes, his most loyal general, to carry out this campaign of revenge. Holofernes and his massive army crush any resistance in his way until there is only one nation left, the Kingdom of Judah. Holofernes wants to capture Jerusalem, but his path is blocked by the small town of Bethulia. Instead of fighting the Israelites, Holofernes cuts off Bethulia's water supply. 34 days later, the people of Bethulia are ready to surrender. But Uzziah, the town magistrate, convinces the people to wait five more days for God to rescue them. Enter Judith a beautiful, pious widow living in Bethulia. She is angered by the idea of setting a time limit on God's work and scolds the town's leaders for doing so. But they are suffering, so Judith promises to carry out a deed that will be known from generation to generation. That night, Judith and her handmaiden leave the town for Holofernes camp. They convince the Assyrians that they are ready to betray their fellow Jews and want to share information with Holofernes. Judith and her maid spend the next four days with the Assyrians, when Holofernes invites Judith to a banquet. Knowing that Holofernes was attempting to seduce her, Judith dresses in her finest clothing and jewelry. She seduces the general into eating cheese and wine, a lot of wine, more than he had ever drunk on any day since he was born. Holofernes passes out on his bed. Judith takes Holofernes' sword and makes her move, saying, Now is the time to shatter the enemies who have risen against us and cuts off his head. Judith and her maid escape the Assyrian camp, Holofernes' head in tow. She returns to Bethulia a hero, holding up the head for the whole town to see. The Assyrians, meanwhile, discover the headless Holofernes on the floor of his tent. The camp goes into a panic, and most of the troops scatter. The Israelite army plunders what is left and kills the stragglers. Judith continued to live as a widow in Bethulia and died at the ripe old age of 105. The story ends by saying no one attacked the Israelites during or in the time after Judith's life. However, this isn't reflected in the historical record. In fact, a lot of Judith's story isn't. Remember how we said our story began in 593 BCE because it was the 12th year of Nebuchadnezzar's rule? Well, the great city of Nineveh had already been destroyed in 612 BCE. Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, so when it fell, so did the empire. And who destroyed it? It was Nebuchadnezzar himself, because he was a Babylonian king, and the Assyrians were actually his arch enemies, and he had just destroyed their capital. Later, when Holofernes seeks to attack Jerusalem, well, in reality, Nebuchadnezzar had already been besieging Jerusalem for the past two years. And Bethulia, Judith's town? No one really remembers where Bethulia was, and it's only mentioned in this story. As for the ending, where the Jews live happily ever after, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians actually destroyed Jerusalem in 587 BCE and ended the Kingdom of Judah, pretty much the opposite of what the story describes. Perhaps because of that, the Book of Judith wasn't included in Jewish Holy Scripture. But her story persisted, and Jews in medieval Europe would retell it during Hanukkah due to the themes it shares with the story of Judah Maccabee. In some oral traditions, Judith was even recast as Judah Maccabee's aunt or daughter. And like Judith in Holofernes' tent, they would eat cheese as part of their festive meal, often frying it in oil. While most Jews today now fry potatoes to make latkes during Hanukkah, others still use cheese out of family tradition, even if the reason why has been long forgotten. <laughs>